Tom Stoppard won critical acclaim and his first Tony Award for his sideways reworking of Hamlet. Rosencrantz and Gilda Stern are dead. He went on to win two more Tonys for Travesties and The Real Thing. Stoppard has also written screenplays including Brazil and Empire of the Sun. Theater goers are currently enjoying a revival of two of his works, 15-Minute Hamlet and The Real Inspector Hound, and we're pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, why revivals? Why revivals? Um, I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Anything of mine which would be done now would have to be a yeah. revival by definition. Um, I, I hope because you, you don't have something else ready, I assume. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do, but, but it's uh, to be in London first. Yeah. Is, is there a difference in the American stage uh, in terms of the reception to your work in America and in London? In New York um, and London? Much less than you might imagine. Um, playing to the same audiences, pretty much. Yeah. I don't uh, may have to make adjustments. I, I'm, I'm intrigued because I know that there's a play that's now playing here that opened in London. And a lot of people say the London version was better, the London staging was better, maybe even the London you know, cast was different and mm -hmm. therefore more appropriate, not necessarily better actors. How much difference, I mean, you're a playwright, do you notice in the staging of a play that you do from one place mm -hmm. to another? The director is the interpreter of the piece, and uh, it isn't the case that there is an English type of interpretation and an, an American type. Uh, you get different sorts in different places. Uh, in the, in the, the, with the plays of mine which have been done in both countries, as far as I recollect, uh, only one has been directed in New York um, by a director different from the one in London. And it was a lot quicker here which um, sounds almost too close to the cliché to be interesting. I mean, yeah. it, it's a quicker town, and the play whizzed by. It was very exciting. I liked both, but I must say that in New York, it was rather exhilarating. It was like um, movie cuts. Do you know what makes good playwriting? I mean, do you have a sense of it? Is it something that I, you could uh, take a, a five, five hours at Harvard and teach, or, or Yale Drama School and teach a students? A play is so many different things, and if one really had to search for something which united them. I suppose uh, one would say that, that uh, the theatre is the descendant of the storyteller. And um, one way or another, um, I, I think that a play which isn't telling a story which is yeah. holding your interest is a play which, which is making life difficult for itself. Yeah. There's something interesting about you, and you may deny this. You have always seemed to uh, you talk about it more lightly than a lot of people take playwriting much more serious than you seem to. Now, you may actually take it very seriously, but not talk about it seriously. Yes, you know I'm, what I mean? I'm a closet megalomaniac. <laughs> 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 and on talk shows, yeah, I'm a model yeah. of British self-deprecation. Yes, <laughs> it just seems to me that it, it plays better that way. Yeah, all right. I'll I, don't know how I, feel, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I, I, I am, but you've heard it before. I have, and I'm self-conscious about it. But, but I do get embarrassed if people start making great claims for... Yeah not just my plays, but for the theatres. And um, it's, it's um, somewhat embarrassing to say this on a television show, but I've been saying it this for 25 years. Show, That's particularly <laughs> what I mean. But, but for a long time, it's not, a, not a, a new thought of mine. I've always thought that, that, that uh, if you want to change the world immediately, uh, television journalism is more effective than drama. I think drama is very important in the longer term. It lays down some kind of matrix of moral sensibilities, yeah. but for action, information, immediate effect, I don't think theatre is that powerful. Yeah. The masses will not revolt because of what they see at the theatre. Well, most of the masses can't afford the tickets, which yeah, is one true. impediment. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you don't think that, that, that theatre has had a political impact in terms of the near term, but maybe in terms of changing culture, changing sure values, changing something, maybe a long run, but not in the short run. I'm sure there are examples of the short term uh, but generally, I think its nature is to have a drip effect. Yeah. Why did you become a playwright? I became a playwright uh, for many reasons, I expect, but the one which I was aware of um, uh, is, is a quite, quite a good example <laughs> of what you <laughs> were <laughs> alluding to. Go, uh, indeed. Um, w when I was um, at that age, which was about 19, um, People of my age started writing plays. Why that happened, I don't know. But um, the great English novel had a, a season out of the sun. And for a glorious period of perhaps 15 years, um, a new writer who got some kind of play on, on a Sunday night without decor somewhere in London would get more critical attention 
than a novelist publishing his or her seventh novel. And so certainly one answer is that it, 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 it appealed slightly to one's vanity. Um, but at the same time, I stayed with it, and I discovered that, that um, I did, you know, what is that phrase? You know, I loved the theatre. I liked the immediacy. Yeah. I liked the danger. I liked the fact that it's uncontrollable. Um, it's exciting. And um, the, that sort of instant reward. Yeah. Why do you write screenplays then? I began writing screenplays, I mean, I'm going back 20 years now, yeah. because um, I d didn't have any I enough ideas to keep me occupied as a writer for the theatre. Now, wait a minute. You did not have enough ideas. That's, uh, that's absolutely the fact, and I still don't. Um, if you look at my record, as we say on political <laughs> interviews, um, I'm not a, I write a, well, a full-length stage play, which is what I would call a proper play. Um, you know, it's like once every four years. Um, yeah. that, that's a long gestation, and I think, in fact, um, much too long, I think. And if you had better ideas, you, you mean, the writing is not that difficult for you. What the difficult is have that motivating idea. It's, it's the idea transmuted into a story. But I must f uh, finish the previous thought, which is that my interest in films has changed over the years. I began um, being glad to try this film thing because I didn't have a play to write. But in the last few years, um, I, I've actually turned the whole thing around. And now, if I have an ambition, it is to write an original screenplay, which I've never done. I've only adapted films from other people's work. And works. how will that be different than writing an original play? Well, I think that um, it would be, uh, m you know, what would be more interesting is the ways in which it would, it would be the same, that it would come from something which I initiate, um, right. which I feel strongly, and which I try to make a story of. In, in the ways that um, it might be different, um, just to make a simple statement, it might actually be easier because would you don't have to sustain any one scene for the length. Yeah. And would you think more visually than you would in, in plays? I would yeah. say this is the obvious. And you, in, in theory, plays, you think more dialogue. Um, it's an odd thing, you know, but, but, but you ask movie buffs what their favorite films are, you know, the older ones. Yeah. And they come up with, with movies which are actually texts. You know, they say, oh, yes, well, they don't make them like Sunset Boulevard anymore and All yeah. About Eve. Now, these are filmed plays, much, or rather something closer to a filmed play than yeah, the modern right, idiom right, of right. filmmaking. Um, they like a lot of dialogue. If it's a good story well told, I don't believe in this particular supposed division that, that uh, in plays people talk and in cinema the camera moves. Um, there are an awful lot of good films which are full of dialogue, and as we both know, there are some films which uh, are wonderful poems of moving cameras which are frightful films. Yeah. It doesn't help to know the vocabulary. Do you want to direct? Well, I directed one film from a play of mine. I'd like to do it again. Um, if, if, if I'd written the script, I'd like to direct the film. But I haven't written a film, but um, I still hope to. Yeah, so you write this original screenplay and then exactly. perhaps direct that film. Well, yeah. Are you ready to direct in your own mind? If the project is right, if it's your screenplay? <laughs> Well, I'm probably less ready to direct my second film than I was ready to direct my first. Uh, uh, one of my friends is a film director, and, and, and he had a huge success with his first film. I remember he told me years ago that, that one of the reasons that he, it worked out so well was that it, he didn't know it was difficult until later. Mm. Let me change the subject with you for a second. Uh, you're, one of your friends is Vaclav Havel, Havel, who just left office. Does it sadden you, or do you, in a sense, are you relieved for him? Um, I don't know. Um, what his personal feelings were. I, I'm not relieved for him, and I'm not particularly sad for him. Uh, the, the bedrock is that uh, the communist era is over there. So one has a feeling of satisfaction, or I personally do, uh, because uh, I, I, I've been there during the communist uh, era and after it, and I know which I like better. It's not all one way, by the way. Um, of course, yeah, I not Some things were better under the old regime? Well, people are poorer now. Uh, in a certain sense. Um, I can only give you one example. Um, it, well, generally, um, some sides of life were heavily subsidized in all the communist countries. And, um, well, I'm a playwright, so let's say theater is one. When I was in Prague a couple of years ago, the theaters actually were having a tough time because uh, theater prices in uh, communist Czechoslovakia were incredibly low. It's like getting on a bus. Right. And um, the subsidy took care of the problem. And now with a, a market economy, a theater ticket seems unimaginably 
expensive, although it's still mm -hmm. cheap by our standards. And theatres, um, much more importantly than the, than the seat price, theatres constituted under the old regime a place where things could be discussed even if only by implication. Right. And they were, if you like, Things like freedom and human rights and... Absolutely, and even local topical issues under slight, uh, by allusion. And theatre was, was the hot spot. It was a kind of hot area of, of interest and, and possibility and potential. And of course, when you, when you can discuss anything anywhere, in any newspaper, any magazine, street corners, buses, the special place of the intellectual playwright who is able to examine his mm -hmm. own society under the threat of some kind of recrimination and retribution, that uh, had disappeared. So in a way, um, you could say that the function of the theatre in a totalitarian regime um, disperses with freedom. Right. It's less important with more freedom. It's less important with more freedom. There's less of a need for it, and therefore it, it plays a less significant role. Exactly, because um, the discussability is everywhere. I once interviewed you, and, and uh, I have, am almost tone deaf, I think. I mean, I, have no, I love music, but don't really have the skills and, and the ear. And I once said to you, are you tone deaf? And you said to me, not only tone deaf, but tone stupid. Uh, <laughs> do you remember that? I mean, would you say <laughs> something like that? And it was just, I, I felt so much better, because you had just written the musical. Well, I am more tone deaf than you are, <laughs> and just take my word for it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> now, there's, a, there's a man who's worked out a system of, uh, of writing music, so all you have to know is whether a note goes up or down, and you can, as long as you have a starting place. And I don't know whether the note goes up or down. Somebody um, very distinguished, well, Leonard Bernstein, once didn't believe I was tone deaf. He was trying to get me to write something that he was composing for. And I said, no, I can't. I, I really don't understand what music does. He said, yes, you do. Listen to me carefully. God save our gracious queen. Now, is it God saves? Does that go up or down? And I'd say, I don't know. Do it again. <laughs> 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 That's great. <laughs> You're a hero to me now. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. Nice Tom to be Stoppard. here. We'll return with the leader of the new generation of African-American filmmakers, producer Warrington Hudlin of Hudlin Brothers. Back in a moment. <laughs>